Hello and welcome to This Is The Police. Um, I've never actually played this before. I just uh, saw a video or two of it and to be honest, I love the look of it. The art style is incredibly good. And the music again is something, I don't know, there's something really charming about it. There's something really, really nice about playing this type of game. I know a tiny bit about the story, but not too much. I know there's it's kind of got some kind of like resource management style gameplay and, and things like that, but anyway, enough talking, let's get into it. Okay, day one, July 15th, Monday. <laughs> Mayor Rogers, sex maniac. City Hall confirms rumours of Jack Boyd's resignation. Mark War 2 to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the Mayor's personal request. Okay. <laughs> When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. Once this cutscene's done, I'll try and fix the audio, because it does seem very loud. This is the scenes. first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Okay, here we go. Looks like hopefully we get to choose some stuff. Good morning. Yesterday the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise or did you know about it in advance? What's the difference? Do you already know the name of your successor? I think it'll be a department veteran. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Uh, perhaps? Uh, don't know. Sounds possible if he thinks a new officer would help him save the city a little longer. I... Okay. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, but that's a pile of horseshit. The Mafia and the police working together. Maybe they're in cahoots with the aliens. The Mafia are a bunch of low-life criminals. How about someone ask a real question? I like that answer. It's a good answer. Do you think your personal relationship with the Mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Definitely not. 
That's not possible. Mayor Rogers is a true professional and he makes his decisions carefully. There's no place in our jobs for hard feelings. Thank you. Okay, sick. How's the back today, Mr. Boy? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. Obviously he doesn't have very good feelings for the mayor. Popping pills, smoking cigars. <sighs> as soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. There's no Mayor smile, Rogers no enters face. every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack! I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. Was you, the same guy doing uh, you ran away voices. so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. Kaboom! Get fucking wrecked. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. This guy's a massive asshole. 180 days quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. Something tells me that we're going to have problems with him. <laughs> I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Fucking hell, that was a really jarring door opening sound. <laughs> what the fuck is oh, this? He's a real busy I'm guy. sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was not something I was expecting. <laughs> what a geezer, Jack Boyard. Already like him. Jack Boyd, only assholes join the Mafia. Civil servants wages won't be raised this year. Cleanness of the city streets increased by 20%. That's what I wanted. That is so loud, I'm gonna have to fix that next time I get a Cops chance. don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines, or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts.
My deputy, Francis Kendrick, he recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Fair enough. Oh! Can we... Okay. One second. One second, one second, one second. There we go, and... Um, options, audio, tin, that, that, and my two. Turn it down in the um, window, so hopefully that shouldn't be as loud. Would you like to receive tips about how the game works? I'm a 60 year old police chief, a few months away from retirement. I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. Okay, well, I do, unfortunately. <laughs> Show me what you got. Freeburg uh, PD organises upcoming work assignments and shifts with today's and tomorrow. Every shift, of officers respond to crimes in progress and detectives continue their investigations. You can freely move employees between shifts. Okay. All officers and detectives possess several important characteristics. Professionalism shows the overall efficiency level of your policeman. A figure around 150 is considered average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable. While those whose professionalism is considerably higher than average are a safe bet, even in a pinch. An individual's level of professionalism may rise and fall over the course of their career. Energy shows how tired your policemen are. The less energy your people have, the less reliable their work. And a policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel or make a critical error on the job. Your employees lose one point of energy after each working day and restore one point after each day of rest. Okay. Your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with reasons they can think of to take the day off, while others like to drink too much. You can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behaviour of your employees. Okay, fair enough. So who have we got? Kochi, Yancey, Purdy... Subaki, Asano, Austin Price, Mole, De Brito, and Armstrong. Price is awful. She's like an old lady. <laughs> Kochi, though. I need more people like Kochi. Ooh. I love the. <laughs> okay, got rid of it. That was quite fucking weird. funny. I was just sticking out there. Oh, okay. Responding to calls is the bread and butter of police work. You'll need to send your officers to the crime scene before the time expires. The mark on the map shows where the call came from, the farther away the destination is from the police station, the longer it will take your officers to travel back and forth. So the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. Oh, okay. Every day more. The easiest way to determine how difficult the task might be is to check how many units you are allowed to send on the call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Particularly risky missions give you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. Okay. The number of slots is not the only thing to consider. Any available information from the location of the crime scene and the presence of weapons and so on, all of this can tell you how seriously each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance until it turns into a brutal meat grinder, or a serious call can come in which turns out to be a false alarm. Okay. A married couple Ex ex exited, I was going to say excited, <laughs> exited a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot back over a homeless man who, no, I shouldn't laugh at that, but how do you manage to back over a homeless man? He's really unlucky, not only is he homeless, he also got ran over. He'd been digging through a trash can, the driver jumped out to help, but once he saw that he'd hit a bomb, he got back in the van and quickly drove away. Uh, doesn't seem too serious. I'm going to send Asano and Subaki. Proceed. I love the visuals. It's so cool, like all the light bouncing off all these buildings. A the theatre manager reports that during a showing of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theatre carrying a snowboard decorated with the weird rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theatre security guards. Oh, we need Kochi, Kochi and uh, Yancey on the scene for this. Okay. 
Okay. Really relaxing as well. The music great. Oh, it's raining. Oh, that is so cool. The visuals are so in. Oh, so cool. Hit and run. What happened? When everything goes well, the police capture the criminals and nobody dies. But the truth is, sometimes the criminals manage to escape. Just try to avoid a dead cops or civilians. Dead cops will hurt your roster, and dead citizens bother the mayor even more than living ones. What a nice person. Defenders court, officers unharmed. And we got some professionalism. Sick. Sick. Right. They've driven back. Yancey and Coach, who look like they've just done it. Offenders court, officers unharmed. Fucking well done, Yancey and Coochie. I like it. I wish I could come up with nicknames, but I'm not witty enough. Hey! Oh, okay, this one's quite far away. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made off with the whole collection of adult movies. The criminals fled in a car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner is one, Janet Brown, who lives in the suburbs. Okay, I need you, Purdy, and Austin. That's definitely like some kid who's stolen like his mum's car or something like that. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna wait. Asano, oh, Asano and Subaki. I don't want to send Prize. Prize can fuck off. A brother and sister clashed with each other over their deceased father's will. According to one of their lawyers, we don't dare separate them and our security guard is off duty today. That's just wrong. Getting into a fight over a will, I just couldn't imagine it. I don't know how, in a, like, how sorry a state your family has to be in that you would fight over somebody's, like, inheritance like that. A passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and money. I wish I could, want, I could send prize, but I'm not going to because I don't, I don't think she's fit for the job. I'm just going to send. Oh, actually, there's three. I'm going to send both Yancey and Purdy. I was going to send just one, but I should have sent prize along as well. Maybe raise the professionalism a little bit. When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask you to handle the situation. Try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. Okay, proceed. The vehicle in question is parked right outside the Browns residence. The sound of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the living room window. Turn on the sirens and loud speaker and shout the house is surrounded. That'll probably end up with someone dying. Knock on the door and they'll probably escape. Well, these are the guys that had the. These are the guys that had the um, shotguns. So I'm going to say that the house is surrounded. Sick. I mean, it looked like the right thing to do. Austin also got back the. Um, oh no, she didn't lose any. Okay, she's just got more then. And Purdy obviously got more. Oh, there's a fight. Everything's gone really well so far. I'm quite. I'm quite uh, worried because that means something's going to go majorly wrong and someone's probably going to die soon. I love this kind of art style. It's so cool. It's so unique. Like, it's... I don't know. It's really, really... I, I don't, just don't know how to describe it. I'm just really impressed by it. Okay. Sick. Oh, I, won. I don't know whether this is good or not. Like, I know they said about 150 was average, but... Like, these guys have really got a lot of... Oh, end of the day. Let's go for it. They've got a lot of uh, professionalism. If you think you'll need a couple of extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cops to come in and work overtime, but if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted. Everybody's bound to make mistakes. Okay. Can I... Okay, yeah, I want you to work tomorrow, and I'm sorry, Coach, I want you and Tsubaki working tomorrow. Used to be, when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. 
and I know that at a certain point every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. So did he actually um, embezzle a bunch of money, or is it Called just allegations? All of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business, so you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. Oh, so this How much gonna make money? To earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. 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 Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every Jesus paper Christ. reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. Everyone else's voice is really quiet when I don't, but I can't I get his sounds so cartoony. Never have, never will. Please, Frank, I'm in with these guys. <laughs> Day three. For Francis Kendrick announced his retirement date. Construction of Cinema Museum postponed again. Legendary singer Gennaro Crespo comes to Freiburg. Good work. Ah. When a police officer is too tired to be affected, effective, sorry, he will ask for a day off. Sometimes officers will request days off even when they're at full strength. Some of the reasons you'll hear are far-fetched, while some are very serious. Don't overindulge your subordinates, but don't antagonize them either. Remember that everybody's got secrets, and you've got to make sure these guys have your back. Birch didn't come into work. Cool. In addition to their performance ratings, police officers also possess rank. And please begin at the lo <laughs> lowest rank, and can be elevated in rank with one, two, or three stripes. Oh, excuse me. Once a week you can pass out stripes and improve the rank of any employee. If you think that no one is worthy of the honour, some weeks you can postpone the ceremony until later. Insignias won't go out until your people are ready. Cool. Employees of rank not only increase in professionalism, but also learn to command. Whenever a ranking officer is on the scene, his or her colleagues are more likely to perform better than usual. Sometimes when cops get ranks, they start thinking more seriously about their service. This means less drinking, more time spent on the job, some of them might even turn out to be dependable. Oh, sick. 
Okay, so I've got two stripes. Okay, what does B mean? Could be, oh, is that overtime maybe? Oh, okay, this is shift A. Okay, that means shift B. I see, I see. Stovall. God damn it, his professionalism is through the roof. Okay, well, I want one for Kochi. So we've got someone really good on shift. Um, shift A. B. Shift B even. <laughs> And also I want to uh, Subaki as well. Start the day. Freeburg isn't one of those cities where you listen to what they say or nothing at all. You can always select any song from your collection and play it at any time, just like in real life. Well, the life of your grandfather. <laughs> okay, let's go for it. Sweet Ginger Green. Pierce Pickering Ragtime 5. I'm digging it. <laughs> cool. Let's learn how to hire and fire cops. Labor market. You have a certain number of paid job openings for, uh, for which you can hire any available applicants. Job slots are separated between officers and, dete and detectives. How do I know how many people are in each? So that's two, wait, sorry, two, four, six, seven in shift A. So that means there needs to be one more in shift A. I'm, I'm gonna get you, Ned, just because you're the highest. I mean, I don't see any point in getting anybody else, to be honest. So, higher for shift A. And also, you want to free up a slot time to fire somebody. Okay, Roy. If you have legal grounds for the termination, no one will ask any questions. You might need to fire them anyways. Legality be damned, but that could land you in additional proceedings and your other staff will become more worried about keeping their jobs than they are about actually doing their jobs. Another way to free up a slot is to have police officers killed, but that's not really a valid option, right? No, I don't think so, not really. Didn't come to work, came to work drunk. Too old. Is too old really a reason? Oh, I didn't actually mean to do that straight away. Looks like too old really is a reason. And I just fired him. You didn't come into work, I should fire you. Right, can I hire it? Looks like... I'll get Michael Foxman in. Shift A. And, um... Samuel Soap? So pay, so I don't know. Shift A. I'll move them around if need be. We received a frightening call from the local cathedral. This morning the abbot discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old George tombstones are painted with satanic symbols and some have been broken into. Oh, broken into pieces. <laughs> Oops, how can tombstones be broken into? Boom. Anyway, it seems that they are even marked from a shovel, but the abbot would say no more. Uh, it doesn't seem too bad. Let's get Robbins and Samadhi on the case. Atticus Tower. Businessman Harley Jones looking out his window saw two teenagers just scratching offensive slogans onto his new car. Your dick! Just looking onto his fucking car. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna send Kochi and Grant because I actually want to raise some people, so I hope kind of Kochi can pick up the slack. Ooh, report. Offenders Court, officers unharmed. Woohoo! I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing well. I'm just getting really lucky. <laughs> well, I'm kind of happy it's going well at the moment. A waitress named Mila reports that she just served a chicken Eddie and diet cook to a, a dangerous crimp. What's a chicken Eddie? Obviously, being British, I don't really know if that's an American thing or what. What's a chicken Eddie? Anyway, dangerous crimp was just seen on the television just this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger. Okay, let's. Uh, a dangerous criminal, we should. I'm gonna send um, Stovall and Birch Jr. Oh, vandalism report. <laughs> Offenders court. We'll get Grant into a good cop in no time. You can do it, Kochi. I'm 
I'm still so blown away by this. I mean, I've never really seen anything like it. Oh, a witch was a mistake. mistaken retired officer Frank Nero for the fugitive in question. Fucking ruining police time! God! Ooh, 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 ooh. Bouncer stuffed himself with Mexican food again and now he can't get off the can. <laughs> My god. Meantime, the line outside the club is stretching around the block. We need someone outside who can tell the cool guys from the punks. Sounds like a job for you, Roy! Cool guys from the punks? You're old geezer, I'm sure that's what you can do. Don't want you doing anything else. Anyway, don't want you doing any real work. What's this? Oh, it's the actual pause menu. 11, 11. An anonymous caller just came in. A clown carrying balloons at the skating rink is selling crack to teenagers. Okay, let's get Subaki and I want Grant again. Show him the rogues, Subaki. Ro ropes, rogues, ropes, something. English. Oh, reports. Sorry, Chief, but I quit in one night. I quit. On one night I pulled in more cash than I earned in a month working at this dump. Mr. Sorkin said he wouldn't mind taking me on. You've been a cop for years! What? I guess I wasn't cut out to be a cop. Oh god, flashing at me. A naked man carrying a canister of gasoline and is threatened to set himself on fire unless his favourite chewing gum becomes popular again. I think he needs to go to the ment like um, some sort of mental insane asylum hospital. I don't know, hospital for the criminally insane, something, because that's not that, that's not that right, is it? Oh no, how my bob is not popular, I'm going to set myself on fire, <laughs> Okay, I don't want it to particularly happen, let's say in Kochi and uh, Birch Jr, get Birch Jr up a bit. By the way, what I just noticed, it's only 8 o'clock now. We sent Roy out to that club at about, what, 6, 5? Like what club is queuing at 6, 5 o'clock? Anyway, uh, police, as police arrive, a clown is seen making balloons animals for the kids. Cover up in a raincoat and pretend to be the illicit customer. Take the clown onto the ice and round up any witnesses. Carefully watch the clown from the stands. Carefully watch him. 11, 11. Oh yeah, Grant, Grant is coming up in the world, we're going to get her to 150, which they said was average, and then I might give her a rank. Okay. Oh, suicide threat. This is going really well. Again, I don't know whether I'm just doing well or whether I'm getting lucky, but I'm, nothing bad seems to have happened yet. Which I'm quite uh, happy with. Oh, I can end the day actually, I didn't realise. Okay, what I'm going to do is... Can I get them to work? Oh, I can't. Oh, I see, they work tomorrow automatically. Can I, like, change the shifts? I need to guess. Uh, don't mind. Don't mind, don't mind. Okay. I'm going to end the episode here. I know it's around... I was planning on making them around about 30 minutes long. I just wanted to finish the day before I ended the episode. But, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this. I will be making more. I'm quite, I'm quite enjoying it to be honest. The art style is really, really pleasing to look at considering it's such a simple game on the surface. The, um, the music, well, the music in the game again, it's really, really pleasing. I'm quite happy with it. It's just soothing and it fits the style of game really well. So I'm quite happy about that. Other than that, I've been Clough. This is the police. This is, this is the police. <laughs> and could you please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, especially comment. I need all the help I can get. So comment with any advice, tips on how to make these videos better quality. Um, is, is the audio too low? Am I a boring twat? Anything, just, just comment down below and I'll be happy to probably reply to almost any comments I get. So um, yeah, thank you guys and I'll see you in the next one.